Hello, and welcome friends. Today, I've got a buying opportunity for you that you may not want to miss. Yes, it's ice hockey, but just stop. Shut up. Stop, collaborate, and listen, because ice hockey's back with a brand new invention. What is it? It's called Allure. And let me get you over here to the main screen. It's called Allure. It's 2019-20 Upper Deck Allure Hockey. What is that? It's basically select. That's what it looks like. It's just like that select prism with that voluptuous card stock. Uh, same sort of design to me. It looks a lot like select. That's what we're going to relate it to. More importantly, it's the first year that this has come out and the card prices for the good rookies and the short prints are dirt cheap. Why? I would liken it to the hockey market doesn't understand these cards yet. The hockey market has not been bombarded with people from basketball, football, baseball, you know, the people that to do all the PSA grading, the people that are always looking for the chrome and, and, and the prisms and all that, so all that good stuff that we're used to in other markets, the hockey market's kind of confused. I mean, they've got their young guns, and that's basically what they look for. So they're not really looking for allure rookies. It's not drawing them in like it's supposed to. It's supposed to be alluring. Apparently not. But I think it's got a lot of potential, and I think that, you know, I've told you guys in the past, Platinum is a set that I'm going after because the rookie cards are cheaper by far, and there's a lot of room for growth, and when people come in from other markets, they're going to be looking towards these types of cards because though the hockey market doesn't understand them, the people from the other markets do, and they're quite popular. You guys might have heard of Prism or Select, right? Okay. So they've got a bunch of different short prints in here. They've got a bunch of rookies. Obviously, they've got like autographs and patch cards and all this kind of nonsense too. Uh, but I wouldn't even suggest you going and buying a box. Maybe you want to buy a box and stash it away or get a few boxes because it's the first year that this has come out. And that's another reason why it hasn't really taken in the hockey market yet because they haven't had these cards. They're just used to go for the young guns and get out of my way. But I'm telling you, these are the cards that will definitely have an opportunity to go bananas in value when other investors come in and other people are looking at the hockey cards. And hockey has just started their exhibition game. So if you have not given hockey a chance, go do it. Go check out a couple of games. What do you have to lose? You're sitting around in quarantine. The world is miserable. Everyone's dying. Everyone hates each other. Ice hockey. Yeah, it's time. All right, so the next thing I'm going to show you is Kale McCarr's Young Guns Rookie Card. Obviously one of the more popular rookies this year. Look at this. They're selling his Young Guns Rookie Card from this year, 50 bucks, right? $50. So you go over here, and this is Compsy's 2019 Allure Rookie Listing. Now this, I'm trying to tell you guys, the cards here are dirt cheap, and I will show you my purchase history so that you can see what I've purchased from here. But we're going to just look up Kale McCarr, and it might be a little more expensive than it was when I got it, but how much is Kale McCarr? We don't care about this iced out, whatever, rookie. Either way, you could get that for 99 cents. And I love to stack up on Compsy. It's five bucks for shipping, but if you just get shit tons of cards, that averages out to just pennies on the card. So here is the Allure SP Base Macar Rookie, all right? Remember, guys, this is essentially select. It's a brand new select type of a card. It looks good, it's attractive, and you can see over here, this is going, they're asking $50, you know, I mean, I'm sure some at auction have ended for like 38 to 45 or whatever, uh, if we went for the sold listings, but as you can see, the low end here, they're asking $50, uh, if you want Compsy for this, it's going to be 51 uh, and change, but then you go over here to the Allure Rookie short print, right, there's variations just like in Select, so you have the base, then you have the short print, then they do the weirder short prints. They even do die cuts, which is why I liken it to select more than anything else. So they have the short prints, they have the numbered cards, and you, as you can see here, the $50 awesome rookie, there's like 10 of them here for less than $4. So, I mean, I'm probably gonna come in here and sweep through and grab all of these, to be honest with you. Uh, I didn't notice that those guys were all in there still. I mean, you can get the sunset, they have the sunset uh, variant or whatever. There's white rainbow, and if you're looking at rainbow, uh, rainbow is the equivalent to uh, silver in prism or in select. So if you see rainbow, that basically just means silver. I mean, look at the prices on these. Here is just the basic rookie. That's number 80. It's not even the short print. The damn short print, the guy's selling for 273. The base rookie, the dude wants 484. 
Now here's the die cut. There's six dollars and seventeen cents. I mean, compared to the $50 Young Guns card, that's crazy. Now, you start getting into the numbered cards and the autographs, and yeah, they want a little bit of real money, but you kind of expect that. I mean, even the SP Pink Diamond, number 102, 1174. But nonetheless, you want to pick up the cheap stuff. You want to pick up, as PSA Collector says, the low-hanging fruit. Grab them by their peaches. Right here, $3.93. Who else is a good rookie this year? You're looking for that crazy dude, Capo... Caco, all right. What do we what can we get for Capo Caco? All right, we don't want this iced out bullshit. We're not blinging out. You know what I'm saying? This ain't vanilla ice. Or was it? Capo Caco, short print number 109. Everything that's over 100 is a is a short print, just like in what? Select. Okay, dollar 35. Hello, McFly. Uh, I know that a lot of you guys aren't into hockey because you're just not into hockey and you haven't given it a chance. But I got to tell you, when you're doing this reselling stuff, whether it's collectibles, hockey cards, you know, baseball cards, whatever, the more markets you're into, the more opportunities you have. So my wife and I, we do the garage sales, the estate sales. I've been doing collectibles since I was probably eight years old. Uh, you know, everything from comic books, video games, sports cards, the whole nine yards, everything. So when we go out, we you have a bunch of different things that we're looking for and we can get the top end things in every market because we have experience with it so if we come up on a comic book collection or if we come up on a collection of records whatever it is we have enough expertise that we can capitalize and maximize our value and that would be great for you guys to do as well you don't want to just focus on one sport you don't want to be a one trick pony yes it's important to stick with what you know to some extent but it's also important to expand and learn so ice hockey would be a great start, uh, spot to to start and then picking up some of these cards would be great as well because you understand select you understand prism you understand what they're trying to do you understand that the best rookie cards that are in young guns 50 100 dollars or whatever if you can get those cards for two to five bucks on comp just grab a rack of 10 of them just pick the top three rookies spend 40 or 50 bucks stash it in a box and just wait for people to come to it hockey's starting it up people are coming in there's a lot of buzz there's a lot of little buzz here and there about hockey 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 it's starting slowly and it's coming but this is i believe a definite mid to long term hold here because it's just so dirt cheap to get in and you know what select and prism do especially you know something like select back in the beginning so once the hockey market understands chrome and platinum and select and prism and all that kind of shit allure stands to to really get a lot of market share here so uh, just pick out the top few rookies. You got the Kale McCarr. You got the Capo Caco. Uh, you got Quinn and Jack Hughes. I think uh, Quinn Hughes is a little bit more popular. Uh, but you got those gentlemen. Uh, just do a little bit of research on the top hockey rookies, and then you can get these cards for literally uh, just dirt cheap. Today they're like two fifty. I'll show you guys what I picked them up for. I picked them up for like two or three bucks. A lot of them. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna probably come in and grab these Kale McCars. This is the stuff that I've been picking up lately. I'm going to show you guys. Uh, so you can just see that I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Uh, right here, Braden Point is one of the dudes on Tampa Bay Lightning. He's young. He's a rookie in 2016. And he, he's just badass. He just gets better and better. I think he scored like two or three goals today in the exhibition game. Uh, and I didn't have that many of his rookies. And I wanted to pick him up. He's one of the players that I didn't get a bunch of. Uh, so I bought a bunch of his rookie cards today for literally $3 and change or so a piece. So you can see right here, OPG Platinum. And it's the rainbow version. So that's silver. So that's the silver prism essentially, or the silver chrome refractor, you know, however you want to relate it or correlate it to the other sports, uh, $3.42 out the door, uh, bought a bunch of those, not a very big investment. Another guy you guys may have seen me flash on the stream is Anthony Simons. And I didn't really want to keep touting my Blazers guys because I told you Damian Lillard was amazing. I told you that his cards were crazy. I told you to buy the Hoops cards. I showed you my stack of them. I said, hey, get in on this, guys. And, you know, they, they're really good about picking shooters over there. And I've been slowly and quietly picking up Gary Trent Jr. and Anthony Simons. Uh, Anthony Simons a little bit heavier than Gary Trent Jr. I think they're both, you know, great prospects. I think Gary Trent Jr. is definitely a sleeper slash underdog. He's not somebody you want to break the bank on, but you know, you throw twenty or thirty dollars into his base prism for two two bucks a piece, three bucks, uh, and just let him sit because he's a good shooter. He's good on defense. He's passionate. He's got heart, and 
I believe that he can improve at least to the point where that two or three dollar card, you know, could easily be a fifteen dollar or twenty dollar prism. Uh, and you know, then you have an opportunity with grading as well. Uh, so Anthony Simons had a really good game the other night. He absolutely just went off. Obviously, Damian Lillard didn't play. Whatever they gave these guys a chance, but that last Blazers game. Uh, if you really want to see what Anthony Simons and Gary Trent Jr. can do, I think they both hit. Uh, Gary Trent Jr. hit five threes with 19 points. Anthony hit like uh, five threes on 23 points, but they hit like dunks. And, I mean, it's just, you know, you can see that they have skill and you can see that they're going to develop and they're going to find a place in the league. If it's not on this team, it might be on another team. But I think Anthony Simons, if you're going to pick one of the two, definitely the pick. Uh, so I already was picking up his cards. I picked up his Silver Prism Premier for $11. We'll take that for sure. Uh, just a few more of his Optic cards, you know, $7.50 for three of them. You can't really complain about that. Uh, I picked up a bunch of record mailers because, you know, we sell a lot of records here on eBay. And here's my Allure stash. Back to the, the main reason I wanted to get you guys in here. I picked this stuff up on the 28th. So just yesterday I went through and I could not believe how cheap this stuff was. And I was like, wow, I'm going to have to go back and double dip. We're going to have to pick up a little bit more of this stuff. We got Ryan Poling, uh, 99 cents. Uh, super short print, Rasmus Sandin. And I picked up like the mid-range uh, rookies as well. The guys that have some potential but aren't necessarily uh, known as great players or anything. Uh, not a lot of heat on them. So I got these, you know, super short print, 99 cents. Okay, <laughs> you know, I'll take it. Uh, Ilya Mikheyev, this guy's had a little bit of action going on, a little bit of attention. Um, 99 cents, you know, there's the super short print version of his card. Right, just like select, you got the base and you got or whatever concourse and then premier level, ninety nine cents. Uh, Philip Zadina, that guy's gotten some attention. Got his pink SP, dollar thirty. But well, you guys get the point. There's the Kale McCarr. I got the short print, two dollars and eighty four cents. It's not a fifty dollar Young Guns, but it, no one's paying attention to it, yet, you know. But when they are. And they are paying attention, and they come over from other other you know places, and they they understand select, they understand prism, they understand chrome and all that platinum jive. They're gonna have these cards, and the value is going to go up. So if you can get in now and pick up all these cards at like a dollar to three dollars a piece for like short prints and all this stuff, and these people are paying like eighty five dollars a box to get like four or five of them. F that. Just go buy 75 bucks worth of this stuff and have that be your investment. Whatever number you're comfortable with. I mean, look, I was even picking up the Connor McDavid's. I mean, I think that this these cards, first year allure, you know, 10 years down the road, allure is a thing. It's a household name. People have come over. Hockey's gotten more popular. Allure is now one of their nice sets that people enjoy every year. First year, and there's the Connor McDavid for a dollar sixty-eight. There's that white rainbow uh, die-cut silver prism. Very attractive stuff, guys. I picked up those for a buck forty. There's the base Connor McDavid's. I mean, I was basically. I mean, I'm not going for Sidney Crosby or anything because he's less popular to the masses. Uh, oh, he's obviously popular, but Connor McDavid, he like expands beyond just hockey, uh, hockey fans anyway. Uh, so yeah, as you guys can see, he's basically picking up any decent rookie, Kirby Dak. There's his short print pink diamond, a dollar sixty-eight. So I just really wanted to share this with you guys because if you haven't gotten into hockey, you want to give it a chance. Now's the time. This is a great set. This is a great buying opportunity. You don't have to invest a lot. As you can see, the prices today are a little bit more. Prices tomorrow probably going to be a little bit more. So I would suggest that you guys just jump on in there, pick up some of this stuff, thank me later. And you know what? If it doesn't pan out and no one likes hockey and they thumbs down, eh, get the hell out of here you didn't invest that much you know i mean you know it's what are you gonna do it's the first year they've come out with this stuff so i just literally went through and just slammed it um here, here's another secret I'll, I'll share with you guys i don't really like sharing this one because there's competition but uh i picked up this nice joe montana card here for seven dollars let me let me share this with you guys how nice this looks so we can we can see there's 
relatively sharp corners, right? Like there's not a lot of wear on the corners. Like there's maybe a little ding down on the bottom left here. Uh, but this is a really sharp card. We can see the surface like right here on the number one. There's like a little bit of a printing defect. But for the most part, it just looks like Joe's got a horrible stomach ache. Yeah, I love this picture. He's like, Ugh! he's like disgusted. Like he's it's all coming up. Uh, but the centering is nice. The corners are sharp. You know, definitely trying to pick up some Joe Montana cards, especially ones that look nice to get graded. Let's send this in. You know, it's probably not going to get a 10 with the print defect. Maybe a little bit of softness on the corner. What so if we get a nine on this, uh, maybe eight at the worst, eight point five for seven bucks plus a grading fee? I'm in. Uh, old BB cards. These guys are great, man. This is one of my favorite stores on eBay to go shopping at. Like I could just go through here. Uh, I, I even they posted a, a damn Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or Julius Irving. I forget which one. And it was like uh, it, it must have been uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar because uh, it was Lou Alcindor, but man, they posted it for like 20 bucks. I had it in my shopping cart. I went to double check the price. It was like a $200 card and it was gone. Somebody else bought it. So what I like to do with them, they have 11,000 listings, uh, buy it now, newly listed, right? Uh, so you go here, buy it now, newly listed, and you'll see what they've put on. And of course they put all kinds of different cards up here, but like say, you know, you're looking for a specific guy, a specific year, uh, they're fair with their prices. And then I always like to hunt, like I said, for the graded stuff in here because they don't cycle that out. They don't like to, I mean, yeah, it'll be a little more expensive if it looks nice, but you can find very nice gradable cards in this store. They have, you know, all of the ice hockey, basketball, football, baseball. And I like to search by year or search by player and just kind of peruse go through and uh, find the stuff that's good shape very centered like right here Pete Rose 1976 tops take a quick look at this uh, yeah we're not really gonna want this one for 15 because the corners are a little bit on the frayed uh, there's a crease right there you know it's just not that great so we'll pass but you know you say you're looking for 1986 cards you like that 1986 tops football set uh, you just go for 1986 and you click on football. What did they have? You know, there's a bunch of rookie here, uh, rookies. We got Reggie White, Bernie Kosar, Boomer. There's more Joe Montana's. As you can see, those are off-centered. Uh, we avoided those. Walter Payton, John Elway, even down to the Steve Young uh, type guy. I mean, maybe maybe that one looks good enough to be a seven or a six or something. I don't know. But all I know is old BB cards. You guys can check out that store. Thank me later if you find some good stuff in there. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna. I don't want this video to be too awful long. So I. Just, I really want you guys to consider going and getting some of this allure stuff for all the reasons we've mentioned. I think it's a good buy. I think it's a great opportunity and I'm going to be in there buying more of it for sure. And I'll look like a fool. I've uh, definitely been picking up some Michael Porter Jr. I bought, we bought all the PSA 9s that I could. Also the Selects because we think those are going up. Uh, all kinds of stuff in here. I've been picking up these Hoops Kobe rookies because I think that this Kobe rookie in particular uh, because people know hoops right so there's no reason for this Kobe rookie to basically just be 25 bucks uh, yeah it's not the greatest pitcher he doesn't even have basketball in his hand and he's all kind of like yeah what's up but I do think it's an attractive card and it is NBA hoops and hoops is obviously more popular and popular as we go not just some junky base set so Kobe's hoops rookie card I believe that one is one to watch for the future at the price point it's at. 20 bucks is pretty cheap for a barrier to entry. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm really excited about these Damian Lillard cards. I wanted to share that with you guys as well. Uh, this is just awesome. So I, I've got my uh, five right here. I actually sold one on eBay for $194 and I was ecstatic the other day because in my video I said I believe this could be a 200 to $250 card. So I was really happy and I had seven of them. So we sold one for 200 and I was keeping the other six. I have one at the Legacy Sports Card Shop in Las Vegas and I've had him take that out of the case and set it aside because tonight the PWC auctions went off and the rookie patch auto that was up here for Damian Lillard was a beautiful national treasures went for 3600 this went for 362 plus tax and shipping that's crazy I was like wow I was watching it and I was like man if this goes up to like 230 or 240 I'm gonna post mine for like 229 and cycle one more out I'm probably keeping three of these long term probably gonna sell the other three uh, you know, after you know four out of seven whatever I'll keep three out of seven 
But if you go to the bids, you want to check it out and say, man, that's crazy. Was it legit? This dude with 67 feedback could definitely be legit. Uh, he bid on the 28. So he had it already up here. So what happened was this dude bid up to 230. And that was a, I thought that was where it was going to go. My, my estimation was somewhere around 225. That's what I was thinking. So this guy bids 230. And then this dude comes in with a hammer punch and says 357. Now why he did that is I'm assuming that he wanted it and he shot a price that he did not think was going to necessarily be beaten because there's a big gap between 230 and 357. But the problem is, is that the other dude on the 28th had already, he probably had it at like 400 or 375. I don't know. It's hard to say, you know, who knows what would people have like tons of money to spend on a low population card even though the last one was mine that sold for 200, when are you gonna see another one? You know, you're gonna have to find it, you're gonna have to hunt it down. It's low pop, there's only like 100 of them. I had seven, I had like 7% of the damn these things in existence. I've got a few more at PSA as well. I have tons of stuff at PSA. So this is interesting because this dude just shot it straight up and he didn't realize that this other dude already had him beat. So this dude gets screwed in a sense that he had to pay near probably his max. And then this dude thought he was going to just get it for like maybe 280 or something and just clear out all the crumb bums and the shoe clerks. But that didn't happen. Instead, the 357 Magnum did not work. But it's weird that they put 11 at the end of both of these bids. So, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. Like, I want to believe that this is legit and this is real and that I can post mine for like 329 and get some action but it seems more along the line that maybe this is just the 250 to 280 uh, range something like that but either way I mean I'm probably gonna try I mean at this point I bought all of these for a hundred dollars or less on eBay a couple months ago so there's no reason for me to not to try to take that profit because one method that I like to use is that when I buy I buy a bunch when I believe in something if I don't believe in it necessarily but I think it's a decent buy then I'll buy like a little bit but if I really believe in it if I'm confident I'll put a chunk on it and as it matures I think it's good to cycle you know the chunk out let's say you know you make 5x 8x your money or whatever you can sell a portion of it and use that to keep the stuff that you want to go long on because let's face it for some of these you want to go long and you want to go short take bull bull for instance bull bull is is a nice long-term play he's got skills he could end up on another team or he could end up with a lot of space and he's still going to be eligible for rookie of the year next year keep that in mind the NBA came out and said that when whoever played whoever debuted during the bubble they were going to be eligible for rookie of the year next year so bull bull could easily take a shot at rookie of the year next year depending on whatever the class look you know whatever either way he's in contention so that makes it even more interesting for him going forward but at the same time you know in the short term his cards have gone up like double triple quadruple whatever it is so it's definitely time to take some profit distribute some profit out you know send some to PSA get some graded back in time for when basketball is back and and then just keep some for long term so you short him because you got a bunch cheap I bought a shit ton of stuff I was getting optic at three and four dollars I was getting prism at ten to twelve dollars I'm taking profit but I'm also using that profit to cover the stuff that I want to keep for long term the stuff I want to send it to get grading because I do believe in bull bull as a long term play but obviously in the short term it makes sense to flip so you got to just kind of think about where you're at with that stuff uh, but you know the good method is to use the profits that you get as the you know the investment matures to keep the stuff that you want long term and they essentially cost you nothing uh, so yeah, I, I hope you guys have had some fun with me today on this video. If you've enjoyed this, uh, you know, hit that like button, follow, subscribe, whatever I'm supposed to say here. I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for the support that we've had. We're almost up to 60 subscribers on the raw. And if you want to see the cool stuff we're selling on eBay, you can check out VegasFine777.com. All right, guys, I'm going to catch you on the flip side. I got another video series coming up. I'm going to teach you guys exactly how I end up going about buying and selling cards. We're going to do three parts. First one is going to be called research. Second one is going to be called acquisition. And the third part is going to be called distribution. So that's something to look forward to. All right, you guys, have a wonderful evening, and I'll catch you on the flip side.